Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And I'm, I have to apologize, it took me so long to finally get a hold of a Vera Joker wrench. This is the straight wrench uh, with the ratcheting end. Very symmetrical if you look at the, the lineup compared to the standard 15 degree offset of most other wrenches. This one's perfectly symmetrical all the way through. Uh, it has some pretty cool tricks up its sleeve. So let me show you those in just a sec, but I wanted to circle back on a couple of things. Um, when I did the uh, kind of that build of the Klein Rube Goldberg apparatus to, you know, get an articulating um, kind of a small, low profile uh, screwdriver, um, I, I, I got a lot of people who said there are all sorts of these types of right angle ones. And I have done a, a video on right angle things, and I even did a video where I connected a Vera screwdriver to a right angle, wondering if people did that. But here's the problem. Remember, this was my work channel. It wasn't very big, but I had about a two inch, and this one's only like a inch and a quarter, um, but I had like a two inch lag, or excuse me, a deck screw. So the moment I start unscrewing this, you can see that it's gonna push it against the wall. So I'm still going to have uh, another inch or so of screw or more down here that I've got to got to screw out and then be able to screw back in. So uh, if there is a super low profile one of these, you know, I'd be curious about it. But these, they're pretty thick and I even put a short bit in there. I mean, that's about as minimal a bit. And if you look at that, I'm using up a lot of my space and I still have a bunch of, I mean, the screw probably came out to here. Basically it was like, you know, attaching a junction box to a flush, to a wall, not an inset in a hole like normal, you know, for an outlet or something, but literally to the wall and the way it was attached um, required long screws, which means the screws had to back all the way out, which meant they, that I ran into this problem. So I, with the thing I made, I could get it most of the way out and then I could get in with my fingers and then rotate it. I wanted to show you this too. This was another thing I used. Um, I have my Weira flexible handle here and I put on my Mac, um, this is a wing nut screwdriver bit. Um, it's designed actually to, to screw in wing nuts is from what I'm told, you know, you can see that. Um, it also works with, with things like this, um, if you want to line it up and hold it in place, um, but I used it for something like this. Now it doesn't get the big ones. This is this is too big. It doesn't grab it. Slips right out. Um, and in fact, I have another wing nut. This is too big. This one won't work with it either. This is too large a wing nut. Um, Thought I had another little guy here that was sort of in between. But anyway, what I did use it for was these. I had very little room to, to slide up, basically reach up behind, in this case, a sink along a wall. And there was a very narrow channel and I had to um, install uh, a few of these little uh, eyelets. So what I was able to do was kind of just stick them up in there. I think I had like a uh, pliers extending um, some needle nose pliers and I would smash it up into the soft wood and then I could reach up with this around the sink and spin them in. Whoops, I guess it's out of, it was out of view for me too. But anyway, so I was able to, to put that in at, you can see, quite an angle. Um, so that was another tool that I, I utilized in that, that particular job. But anyway, let's get back to the, the Vera. Oh, I forgot. I was going to mention this. Uh, I do a lot of, uh, um, cutting of inner tubes, you know, bike inner tubes like this in order to make um, some sort of rubber bands for whatever it is that I want to hold. Um, and the reason I thought of that, oops, I forgot to bring it out. Let me grab it here. Here's one. So this particular thing, um, when I did the Klein, I assume I'll have done it by now, the Klein uh, flush cutters, I make, they're spring loaded. Um, and I don't want to damage the cutting surface, so I want to keep them um, kind of snugged up. Um, so I just make different sized um, closures. If I make a thick one, this is really strong, a little harder to use, but I can also make a super thin one too. Oops, that's too thin. Just 
Let me cut that so I can make thin ones. But I wanted to show you something else now that I'm remembering. Remember that Titan flush cutter that I had? I had to go back and grab it. Super slippery handles. I mentioned that the spring was really strong. Look at this. Here's the Klein. It's, you can see it's totally closed. I'll put this, this is the rubber band or the inner tube rubber band I made for it. So right there, totally closed. When I put it on this super strong spring here, this thing, um, this still opens up a little bit. You can see as I close it, open it, you can see that this is actually strong enough to uh, spread this, this thing here. So what do I have to do? I cut a custom one that's really strong. There we go. Now it's nice and closed, but I had to go to a thicker one. So that's one of the reasons that I kind of scale the thickness of these to the use that I need. But anyway, Vera, let's go to the wrenches. So first of all, this wrench uh, is a 10 millimeter. As you know, I like 10s. This particular one uh, has a ratcheting and I think, I can't remember what it was, 90 tooth or something like that on the far end. Um, but this particular thing has a couple of other features. First, it's marked with a color coding. That's so you can, if you have a set of wrenches, you can actually quickly look and identify what you've got. Uh, this kind of bulged or swollen center um, is actually quite comfortable. It's a fairly good size wrench. We'll compare this straight ahead with this snap-on standard 10 millimeter wrench. This one um, is the OEXM 10 uh, 0B or 10 OB. Um, so you can see, and then I'm also going to compare it to this snap on ratcheting uh, 10 millimeter wrench. So um, I have a little test platform here to show you a couple of things. First of all, this uh, um, and you see looks kind of like a 12 point right there, similar to the snap on, right? But if I flip it over, guess what? It becomes a six point. And that six point, if I slide it on one way, uh, it goes all the way through the fastener. If I rotate the fastener just a little bit, this is actually locked in there. It holds the fastener and that can be good for, um, in the case of, if you've got a long fastener here and I keep sliding down, you know, falling off the fastener and as I'm trying to reach in and sliding off of it, or in this case here, if I went in, you see how that, that falls down over the top? If I move it just a little bit, then it hooks on that. It actually won't go down um, to the bottom. If I move it one notch, then it falls all the way. So that's one feature of this thing. It also means that it can hold something. So let's say I was trying to reach under a, uh, you're in kind of a blind location or something. I can set this in here and this actually holds it. It holds it tight. I could reach under and then if I can get it started, great. Or I can just hold this underneath while I'm working with the bolt or, or whatever fastener on the top. So that's, that's what that's for. And it actually does work fairly well. Let's take a closer look at now at the ratchet. So I've got a little test bed here. What I have is a very narrow space. Um, and I can get this in here and you can see it is turning it. Get that to focus. It's turning that just fine. Well, what about the snap-on? Now the snap-on, kind of cheating, it does have reversible because it is offset, but you can see that there, once I'm in, it actually doesn't have enough space to uh, ratchet forward. It's kind of wedged in there. And if this, uh, if this actually is up a little bit higher, it won't allow me to grab it whereas I can grab it with the Vera. It does slide in there. A little smaller profile, kind of interesting. What if I drop this in? Yep, I could make that work. 
but it, I'm fighting this this little edge here. Now, of course, this is like a lot of snap-on truck things or Knipex situations, you know, where I invent the absolute one situation in the universe where that particular wrench, you know, succeeds where others fail. Um, but I did find that it just drops in. It is fairly low profile and certainly, uh, certainly works. Um, being flush, you have to flip it over in order to reverse, and that actually is quite handy as long as you've got the clearance. Um, you can see, I guess, there. Uh, whereas if you're using something that allows you to raise up against the... Uh, against a work surface, you know, that can be a big benefit. It's one of the reasons we offset things. Anyway, overall, um, it's a solid wrench. Uh, they're, you buy, you can buy them individually, you can buy them in sets, and they would come in a tool roll, kind of like my micro screwdriver Vera tool roll. This particular one, I think I paid a little over 20, 22 bucks or something like that for it. Um, so it's definitely in the ballpark of snap-on wrenches. Um, but it does have those other features. It's kind of nice. Um, it is, uh, I believe, a Czech Republic wrench and um, will probably cause me to get a few more Vero wrenches because this is a, this is a good, good idea. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad people have been suggesting that I get a hold of one of these and try it. Uh, I did wonder, though, I saw you could also buy SAE sizes or fractional sizes, you know, inch sizes. And I was wondering, why is Vera encouraging us to continue using the fractional system when the metric is just so much nicer? But, oh well, I guess they go where the money is. But anyway, this is a good solid wrench. I like the features of it. It's a little bit different than these. It's not replacing one. Um, it's adding to the uh, possibilities. And with that, Doc out.